Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum Update Thursday, October 17th, 9.54 a.m. Mountain Time, 2019. The GFS models are showing heavy snow through the end of October, covering the entire Canadian shield almost. This is going to make it very cold up north, and that cold air will be penetrating down into New England and further south. The snow models show four feet or more in northwestern Wyoming and parts of Idaho, and almost 10 feet of snow falling in B.C. We also have Tropical Storm Nestor developing, currently called Tropical Cyclone 16, and that will be moving uh, north and east towards the Florida Panhandle and the southeast in the coming days. Keep calm. It's boom time. We have an explosion, a submarine volcano exploding. We warned about it yesterday, met a shoal, and it blew up. Certainly, a new submarine explosion. We'll get to that if you stick with us. Multiple storms for the northwest and Rockies. Snow will fall in the northwest parts of the Rockies for the better part of one week. Here's the current snowfall on the ground. Snow in Canada, snow in B.C., snow on the B.C.-Alberta line here. And we have heavy snows on the ground in Manitoba and North Dakota. And the snow forecast through your Friday, a little bit in the DAX, coming all the way down potentially into New Mexico there, down the Rocky Mountain front. And by Monday, October 21st, heavy snows will have moved all the way through the Rocky Mountains. The only place left out here, Sierras. Heads up. And this system will continue to move east. As we, and the cool air will move east uh, as we enter the end of October here. Here is the departures from Norm, and you can see the east coast is going to be quite chilly through October 30th. Now let's talk about the tropical systems. Here you can see a current, that current bomb cyclone off of New England that we warned about saturating that area. That's going to quickly move away as the snows and the rains move in to the big dark there in Seattle. We reported on that. And there's a tropical system that's brewing down here. So the snows will become colder and deeper by Friday. And that system is going to be strengthening. We're going to be watching it closely. Nestor. So there's Nestor's current track is, you know, right around the panhandle here. Is that where Tallahassee is? And so I have to figure out where we are here. Tropical storm Nestor is expected to form an impact Florida this weekend. A tropical disturbance is trying to get better organized in the Southwest Gulf. In fact, the models are now showing 90% or more of tropical storm uh, formation. Satellites already have wind near tropical storm force. And if it continues, this will be tropical storm Nestor. There's the current path of that low. Friday, 8 p.m. off the coast. Saturday, 8 a.m. landfall. Take you over to the National Hurricane Center. And the reason this is scary is because this is what just happened in New Orleans. In case you missed it. Oh, my God. Obviously, wind and rain are... The the last things that this situation needs, but there could be some of both on the way. Yeah, in New Orleans, they're anxiously watching this tropical disturbance over Mexico. There's a chance it could become a tropical depression or a tropical storm over the next couple of days, and it seems pretty likely that they're at least going to get some rain coming up toward the end of the week as that thing approaches the northern Gulf of Mexico. Now, if the storm hits the city, obviously this could be disastrous for the French Quarter. There were two huge construction cranes that are just dangling near the partially collapsed Hard Rock Hotel. Holy macaroni. At least two people... Well, good news. It looks like the storm is going to be tracking far east of that. And we do have the current tracks. So far east. It, it's moving further east uh, as time progresses. I'll leave you links below to the Kona Depression here and the Tropical Storm Force winds. Friday night off the shore, Saturday morning on shore. Heads up. Check the GFS model once more for snowfall. And you can see uh, Friday through Saturday, snow moving into Colorado. Sunday, snow moving throughout the entire Rockies. 
and there's your Monday morning. And then that cold air is going to move east and cover Canada. We're going to keep a close eye on it. Stick with us. Seismic update. No quakes of note. The cacophony of quakes in the Philippines has quieted down. Uh, but there has been a continued seismic activity unrelated on the San Andreas zone here in California. We just had a little popper kick off in Oklahoma in Ponca City. Fracking debacle. But we are waiting for an uptick. Seven magnitude coming potentially in the next 24 to 48 hours. Hold on to your seatbelts. And I'm going to bring you over here to... Ultimos, Mexico, Servicio Seismológico Nacional. And this is the National Seismological Center over in Mexico. And if you notice on the USGS map, there are no quakes in Mexico that match this. There have been hundreds of quakes over the last three days, three to four magnitude, concentrated uh, down in the southern regions. So I'll leave you links to this if you want to check it out yourself. Feel free. Lots of seismic activity in there. Associated potentially with volcanoes. So, that's a heads up. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Etna, Fuego, Krakatoa, Shivalush, Karangitang, Tukono, Reventador, Sakurajima. Sakurajima erupting today. Fuego as well. And the Medishol Volcano. Let's get more info on that. We also have Shivalush blowing to 26,000 feet, which is quite normal these days. But day after day after day, Shivalush is puffing. And now let's talk about Medishol Volcano. A submarine eruption was spotted on Monday with the steam plume rising to 17,000 feet. There's another picture. Oh, it's a cat. Above the water surface, aviation color code was raised to orange by the Tonga Met surface. No other signs of the eruption have manifested on the surface so far, but the previous eruption in 1995 was explosive. This could just be the beginning. This could be the ending. This could be the beginning of the ending. Let's talk about some facts. A lot of people are wondering why the September temperature spike was up so high if we have, in fact, been trending drastically cooler since 2016. We almost matched temperatures back in 1997. Imagine that. Well, this anomalous spike happens all the time. Here's one, here's one here, and here's one here. Um, quite frequently, and Dr. Roy Spencer eloquently explains the rec record Antarctic stratospheric warming, which caused the September 2019 global temperature update confusion. While the vast majority of our monthly global temperature updates are pretty routine, September 2019 was proving to be a unique exception. The bottom line is there's nothing wrong with the UAH temperatures reported. But what Spencer discovered about last, last month's temperature is pretty unusual. It all started when the global lower tropospheric came in at an unexpectedly 0.16 degrees above normal. That's the 1981 to 2010 average. And Spencer says unexpected because as Weatherbell's Joe Bustardi has pointed out, the global average surface temperature from NOAA's CFS model has been running 0.3 C above normal. And our number is usually not that different from that model product. So the discrepancy is anomalous. And as I've told you before, these uh, temperature graphs, they fluctuate uh, up to 0.6 degrees monthly. So even if there is a cooling phase that's going to be lasting for decades, we could see a warming spike of up to 0.5 C. And in fact, if I could bring this graph back up here, that is in fact what we have here. Uh, we have a spike of 1 to 0.3 degrees above the average that we've been reporting on. So, normal variability, read the article, due to sudden stratospheric warming in the Antarctic, skewing the numbers globally. Now, if you don't know about Dr. Susan Crockford, she's probably one of the world's leading experts on polar bears, and she just got canned from the university. Was she punished for telling school kids politically incorrect facts about polar bears? Probably, because the people who decided their fate, their jobs, are decided higher up, and the mandate is global warming and that polar bears are dying. Not according to the facts, though. So just as climate science is being destroyed before your very lives, zoology, biology, 
and other branches of the physical sciences astoundingly affected by multinational corporations because they don't want you to know the facts. They're only interested in the propaganda. 20 ancient wooden coffins discovered in Egyptian necropolis. What does Pelosi have to do with that? There they are. Awesome. These primitive hunter-gatherers chipped this together with stone tools and, and they didn't even have a language. Look at those idiots. Feast your eyes on the first interstellar comet ever directly observed. It almost looks like VGA footage of some creepy dude in the snowstorm with a flashlight. Now, this inter interstellar visitor, which is very similar to a muamua that passed through last year, the only difference is that this one is emitting a signature, chemical signature, very indicative of our own solar system. So while the trajectory shows it's coming from an interstellar position, this puppy probably originated from our solar system. They're not telling you that. But the comet called 2i Borisov, identified in August by an amateur astronomer named Gennady Borisov, who lives in Crimea. This baby is lit up and headed in. And in just a few weeks, amateur astronomers are going to be able to track this. And in just a month or so, it's going to be passing by right in our solar system. November, December, the electric comet lights will be lighting up the skies. I can't wait for this show. <clears throat> now, how the universe stopped making sense? Well, scientists stopped, stopped doing science. We're getting something wrong about the universe. Yeah. Wow. They're just catching up at space.com. Yeah, space.com, if you're listening, it's electric. <laughs> Little bonus at the end of the video today. Cure for Cancer, the Rick Simpson Protocol by Gingerick Bear has been redone with a free download or you can just read it live on air. If you're wondering how to create your own cancer medicine or cure for many other ailments using natural plant-based THC and hemp, well, actually, you need, uh, you need cannabis for Rick Simpson oil and you need indica, several varieties. And you need to make the tincture out of several of them, mix it together. But you'll learn this all if you read The Cure for Cancer, The Rick Simpson Protocol by Gingerick Bear. And I will leave links below. And we will be demonetized. And you will learn something. Free book coming out for those of you that are interested in snowflakes. The good kind. The real kind. Kenneth G. Lebrecht has offered this free book. It's massive. On snowflakes. Did you ever wonder why there's never two that are alike? Maybe they are. Maybe Kenneth found them. The book is free, and it's hundreds of pages of free stuff about snowflakes. Well, snow crystals. The further a society drifts from the truth, the more it will hate those who speak it. They hate me. Hope you got something out of the video. Thank you to all of our one-time donors, our new Patreons, all of you that share these videos. You're helping the channel grow and you're getting this information out there. Heads up to those people on the Gulf Coast. We're talking New Orleans all the way down to Fort Myers. You should be prepared, not scared. Be safe. We love you. That's boom.